Hello and welcome. Another day, another coup attempt in Africa. The crisis is worsening across the continent. This time it is the Democratic Republic of Congo, which says it has thwarted an attempted coup at the presidential palace in Kinshasa. Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo says armed men, including foreign fighters, attacked President Felix Tshisekedi's office and the residence of the economy minister, Vital Kamere, who is tipped to be the next parliament speaker. The DRC military says the attack involved foreigners and Congolese. Shots were also heard outside the presidential palace at the time of the coup bid. The armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo inform our citizens and the international community that an attempted coup d'etat has been nipped in the bud by the defense and security forces. The attempt involved foreigners and Congolese. These foreigners and Congolese were put out of action, including their leaders. The defense and security forces are in full control of the situation. We'll come back to this in great detail with pictures to back it up. The army says the coup plot was led by Christian Malanga, a U.S.-based Congolese politician. He was killed when his forces attacked the presidential palace. Now, the Congolese army says several Americans and a British man were a part of the operation. Around 50 people, including three American citizens, have been arrested, including Malanga's son. Videos have also emerged showing the leader of the attempted coup, Christian Malanga, broadcasting live on Facebook from inside the presidential palace shortly before he was killed. In the video, Christian Malanga had declared that the militants cannot carry on with President Sekedi and the fighters were seen brandishing flags of Zaire, the name of the DRC under the dictator Mabiutu Sese Seko, who was overthrown in 1997. The army says Malanga also attempted an aborted coup in 2017. We, the military, are tired. We can't put up with Chisakadi and Khmer any longer. They've messed up this country too much. We've lived abroad, and when we see the social situation of the soldiers' children, it's unacceptable. Felix must go. Felix, you're out. The Congolese army says the group planned to attack the home of new Prime Minister Judith Suminawa and the residence of the Defence Minister, but they couldn't identify the residences. Now, the African Union has strongly condemned and expressed concern over the attempted coup in the DRC. France's ambassador has urged French nationals to avoid the area near the presidential palace. The Congolese army says that the situation in Kinshasa has been brought under control. Streets near the presidential palace remain closed. We saw on social media, on TikTok, soldiers dressed in military uniforms with the insignia of the Zaire flag, shouting New Zaire, New Zaire. What surprises us is that the palace of the nation has a lot of presidential guards, but these people accessed it easily and were well armed. However, until now, we don't know exactly what happened. We are waiting for official information on national television. We are already in mourning because of what is happening in the East, but now people are dying as easily as chickens in the capital. We don't even know who these people are. What is happening in the country is not right. The palace of the nation has always been very secure. How did they get there? President Felix Tshisekedi was re-elected for a second term in December with over 70% of the votes. The parties backing him won around 90% of the seats in the parliamentary elections. But Chisikedi is yet to form a government some five months after the elections. Now, for more details, we have with us David Otto, the director for Geneva Centre for Africa Security and Strategic Studies, who is joining us live from Abuja, Nigeria. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now let's jump right in. Absolutely. Let's jump right in. Will this attempted coup amid a political crisis and unrest in the East due to the M23 rebels 
throw the DRC further into crisis. What happens now? Well, I think you're very correct. Um, this is more of a demonstration of the coup pandemic uh, that um, Africa has been experiencing, the Sahel. Uh, DRC, Congo itself, you know, this is the, um, uh, the eighth attempt, you know, um, in terms of a military coup d'etat two successful coup d'etats in the 1960s. You know, so it is a very worrying situation, especially as you mentioned, uh, that DRC is still bedeviled by the crisis uh, in the eastern part of DRC. Um, you know, the conflict uh, that they have with uh, Rwanda, of course, this is not a conventional conflict, but some kind of a cold war uh, with DRC at some point threatening to invade Rwanda. So the coup attempt, uh, comes at a very critical time. What is more worrying is the fact that, you know, these armed men who are linked uh, to foreigners, you know, with U.S. citizenship and Canadian nationalities, mm. um, they managed to penetrate uh, the presidential uh, defense, you know, uh, and then found themselves within the presidential mm. palace, you know, as they call it, or the presidential residence. Yes. Um, it, it shows, you know, uh, that there was some level of... Uh, violence, you know, that may have been used. Otherwise, you know, perhaps some level of compromise within the presidential guards, you know, so it's still very early to tell, mm -hmm. uh, but it does demonstrate a, a very weak point uh, in, in terms of, you know, the the, um, the renewed presidency of uh, President Tshisekedi, who has just won uh, his new term of office and, and is even yet to name his ministers. Yes. Um, again, one thing which is quite critical is to know that these are men were going after the critical personalities, you know, the presidential, uh, uh, you know, uh, residence which houses the president, uh, the home of the uh, person who is um, uh, expected to, who has been nominated to be the speaker of the assembly, uh, and some, perhaps, the Ministry of yes. Defense. It tells you that there has been some level of planning and preparation uh, with it. It's a big concern for DRC Congo and the region. Yeah. Yeah, David, on that, what can you tell us about the foreign hand? There are reports that three Americans were among the perpetrators, including the son of Malanga, and arrests of a British and American nationals having been made. I think it's very important to, uh, this is a very critical point, um, you know, but one needs to understand that the, 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 the circumstances are quite um, unique in the sense that, you know, the, there is perhaps a reference to um, Congolese Americans. You know, these are dual nationals, perhaps um, individuals who uh, claim to be Congolese, but perhaps have American passport or, um, or, or, or Canadian passport. So we haven't seen um, any, um, you know, so-called white Americans or people who are purely from American background without any African background. So, um it will be a very big concern to the American embassy and the Canadian embassy or any other embassy that, um, you know, um, may have their citizens uh, as involved uh, in, in this attempted coup. Um, whether it demonstrates, you know, some mm -hmm. level of, uh, um, you know, uh, an American, um, you know, tacit support uh, is something that one cannot yet establish. But I think what has happened here um, you know, especially in the case of Christian Malanga, is an is somebody who has you know who attempted a coup d'état again, as you mentioned in 2017, and then you know went to America. And now yeah. he has found himself in DRC Congo, and organized you know armed men to to launch an attack. So the American government is going to be concerned, um, but we have to note that these are perhaps mm -hmm. dual nationals, people with Congolese. Um, uh, you know, background rather than Congolese military men, you know, uh, in, in direct engagement. Yeah. Now, David, this is um, the latest among a slew of coups in Africa, as you mentioned. What are your comments on the coup epidemic that seems to be gripping the continent? I think it's quite simple. You know, it does demonstrate um, that, you know, democracy is being threatened and, and I think, you know, one of the reasons has been that governance, uh, in terms of what uh, political parties or politicians do promise um, in the cases of Africa, is not necessarily what they're delivering. And this is leaving a lot of people 
um, you know, discontent to the level where they believe that, you know, they can organize themselves in small and groups and take power by force. Um, it, it demonstrates that democracy itself yeah. has a huge weakness. You know, um, of course, we're not just talking about scenarios where, you know, men with guns are taking power, but we're also talking about scenarios where the constitution is being changed uh, to, um, you know, to suit those who are in power. We're talking about scenarios where elections have been forged uh, to allow for politicians to remain in mm -hmm. power. So it's a whole combination of constitutional and military coups uh, flying around the continent. And, and again, it tells just one message that, you know, the independence of the legislature, uh, the executive and the judiciary, which forms the bedrock of democracy, it's no longer respected. And for that reason, and this is not an excuse yes. at all, for that reason, many people see themselves or find themselves in a position where they think that because these democratic governments are in power and are being protected by the military, either the military takes power or some military factions, you know, take power themselves. You know, so it's a very critical situation mm. and a huge pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. David Otto, thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa. Thank you for your time. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison LaGrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.